Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Jeremy Scott Films Podcast Radio Show. Coming to you on this Sunday, October the 9th, 2022. Hopefully, it finds you staying safe and staying sweaty all at the same time. On today's episode, we are talking about minimally processed foods versus highly processed foods. What you should know. I'm going to play off of an awesome little article um, from Precision Nutrition. Uh, Alex Peacock Anand put this bad boy out. I'm going to put this thing in the show notes if you guys want to look at the infographics. But I'm not going to walk through the whole... I say real food all the time. You guys listen to me. I'm like, eat real food, eat real food, eat real food. And that's things that run, that fly, that swim, that grow from the earth. It it seems uh, pretty simple. But there is a certain level of processing that has to happen with most things nowadays. Uh, Very few of us are out hunting um, and even if we are, we're not, you know, it's not old school. We're not just like, you're not shooting a deer, cutting it open right there, and then just, you know, taking a bite right out of the heart. It's not what most of us do anyway, uh, at least in the Scottsdale uh, city area. So I'm going to kind of walk through the difference between foods that are highly processed, foods that are minimally processed, and ways you can boost your health without sacrificing convenience. And that's what, what, what processing is at the end of the day is, you know, we made things convenient for people, uh, maybe to a fault, I guess, in certain instances, because you get access to everything all the time. And now you can buy, you know, 5,000 calories for five bucks anytime you want. And I don't think that's necessarily a great thing. I mean, I love the, the freedom of choice to, to eat what you want and do what you want because, you know, that's America and you can uh, kind of, make your own path, but it tends to get us into trouble because we have made things so easy, so convenient, and so highly processed with the flavor profiles and just how, I guess, addicting they can be for a lot of people. So that's today's episode. Before I kick into that, just a couple housekeeping things. One, reminder, our Strength and Stamina program, it's a six-week program that's dropping in the Jeremy Scott Fitness app tonight. Uh, Day one is actually tomorrow. Uh, JeremyScottFitness.app. You guys can get a free seven-day trial. So if you want to go in and check it out, see if the program's for you. It's not only that program. You get access to every other program that we've loaded in there. Uh, our Cut and Jacked is in there. Our 10 Weeks to Rip program is in there. We have uh, At Home Dumbbell, At Home Metcom program. There is a five-week hybrid high-intensity program. There is over a thousand other workouts. Uh, we break them down into categories. So if you want to focus on upper body, lower body, uh, the Metcon stuff, mobility, uh, nutrition, there's a mindset tab, and then all of our guides in there, our uh, smoothie guides, our macro guides. This thing is jam packed, and for what we're charging, it's worth, I mean, easily, in my opinion, 20 times of uh, that. But we're giving it to you guys for free for a week, and then just a handful of pennies a day if you want to continue on with us. And again, I've, I've put you know my life into it, I continue to do so. Heather and I were here filming yesterday to make this thing as awesome as we can. Anybody who is in there, which there's thousands of you, so thank you guys for for being part of it. Uh, You know I answer every question inside the app. We're giving away a ton of prizes. These guys are just about to wrap up our 34 day ab and core challenge, which we're flying the the grand prize winner here to Scottsdale, putting them up at Savannah, bring them in here. They They can train with us and we're doing one more big transformation this year. And I think for that one, we're gonna uh, fly the winner to uh, Orlando, Florida, put them in one of the vacation properties uh, we have access to, and uh, they can have a good time with their friends and family there, chilling by the pool, enjoying the, the sun. So if you're, if that sounds cool to you, get fit, get healthy, we give away a bunch of free shit, check it out, germanscottfitness.app, a free seven day trial, do a week for free, see if you like it, stay with us, if you think it sucks, go do something else, I'm happy to suggest it. Also, we're brought to you by my homies at Athletic Greens, the one thing I take every single day and I never miss. Athleticgreens.com slash Jeremy Scott gets you a year's supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with order one. 75 whole food ingredients, probiotics, digestive enzymes, and the antioxidant equivalent to eating 10 to 12 servings of fruits and vegetables. I'm just like you guys. I get busy. Um, I, I am, you know, I'm not a complete, you know, fucking mutant. So I am social at times. I do hang out with friends like we did last night. And uh, because of that, I didn't eat uh, 10 to 12 servings of fruits and vegetables. I had some fruits, had some vegetables, but not nearly enough. So I took Athletic Greens way before that, like I do every single day, because it covers the gaps in my nutrition. I still was eating watermelon, still had broccoli, still had steak, I still had onions and peppers and all the things I was going to eat anyway. But 
that was not gonna be enough. And so it's an easy way for me to make sure my body gets all the things it needs that I'm missing through real food, especially when you were traveling, which the next like six weeks, Heather and I have a bunch of like, it's some work stuff and some fun stuff, but we're, you know, on the road here for two days and we come back, we're on the road for three days, we come back, it's tough to do. And so the greens kind of help me get by and it's the best tasting greens on the planet. So it's easy for me to throw into my life. Grab a pack, throw in some water and I slam it, I'm good to go. So if you guys want to check it out, athleticgreens.com slash Jeremy Scott will give you a year's supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with order one. And if you're not sure, send me a message, shoot us a DM, send us an email, get in contact with us however you want. We will send you a pack right to your front door, 100% for free. You can try it, see if you like it, and then get hooked up with all the free stuff from there. That's my gift to you guys. That's how much I believe in it. I'm willing to lose money and send out thousands and thousands of packets. And if you all think it sucks, then don't pick it up. But honestly, most people who get it, they're like, oh, you know what? It actually is pretty good for a greens. You know, is it a milkshake? No, but you know, most things that are super, super healthy for you don't taste like milkshakes. So I'll send it to you. Don't feel weird. Don't be nervous. Just hit me up. Send me a message. I'll send you the pack. You can try it for free. See if you like it and then get hooked up from there. All the links uh, for these are in the show notes as well. Same thing with our friends at Dry Farms Wine. You guys can order a bottle of wine, get the next bottle for a penny. This is organic wine without all the bullshit additives. It's a it's a pure natural wine. I don't know nothing about it. Heather is the expert here and not me. But if you want to check it out, dryfarmwines.com slash Jeremy Scott Fitness. The link is in the show notes. Order a bottle. Get a bottle for a penny. Also, our friends at Beam uh, CBD. This is the product that we take to go to sleep each night. They have so many flavors now. Uh, of the dream product, which they have a pumpkin spice, which Heather's been going crazy on. The chocolate cinnamon is what I typically do. There's a salted caramel. I think there's like an apple pie. There's quite a few. The point is, uh, this is what we take uh, to kind of help with sleep. It's natural. There's no THC in it. You won't get high. It's not habit forming. You don't wake up feeling groggy, but there is real legit CBD in here. There's melatonin in here. They have put together a pretty legit formula. The site is beamtlc.com. If you put in the code Jeremy Scott, you get 20% off all products, 35% off all subscriptions. And like the Athletic Greens, if you want a free sample of the Beam, uh, hit me up. Uh, we have, a, I think we got quite a few here uh, still over in the box. So that's just have Monica send you a pack to your house. You can try it for a couple of nights, see if it helps you get to sleep, and more importantly, stay asleep and have more restorative quality sleep. So you wake up, you know, feeling like Rambo and you can just beat the shit out of the world, that's ultimately the goal. And if you wanna check it out, it's all in the show notes, beamtlc.com, put in the code Jeremy Scott. They have a ton of products. It's not just the, the dream, they have oils, they have salves, a lot of stuff on the site. And again, we have had Matt and Kevin on the podcast. We know these guys, uh, good dudes, and they just, they, they give a shit about people. So check it out. Honestly, you guys, I've said this before, all the, the people we have who sponsor the podcast from Sleep Sold Separately, to JLab Pro, to Kettle and Fire Bone Broth. We know these people. Like we meet these guys, a lot of them are, are my close friends. Some of them are just people we've met in the industry and create a relationship with, you know, either in person or digitally over the years. Our goals align, uh, we believe in what they do. We wanna help them out, you know, cause I'm just, I'm a fan of people just trying to push the, the health agenda. Like I just, I, I really am. It's the same way like we had uh, Dimitri Spanos on the podcast on Friday. I'm a fan of people just who want to push, you know, financial literacy. So people don't get into money trouble, um, which causes a lot of unnecessary stress in your life and show people, hey, you can be financially independent. You can make money. You can have a better life for your family and not have all these, you know, constraints by doing, you know, dumb stuff or not being educated. It's the same way I feel about health and fitness in any industry. So any people we have on, they align with what you know, we believe in for the most part, and uh, we all kind of have the same shared common goal, just be an awesome person. And um, to quote, you know, Horace uh, Jackson Brown, you know, plant more flowers than you pick, man. Like that's the goal here, right, of life is, is for us to plant more flowers than we pick. And it basically that's the, you know, be a fountain, not a drain uh, scenario, if you will. Uh, that popped in my head real quick because we have a quote here on our wall. And I'm a huge, you know, harp on time person because I think a lot of people waste time uh, on low return activity things and they find themselves spinning their wheels and not getting where they want, whether that's their health and fitness or their finances or their relationship or career or 
or anything. And it's easier now, I think, probably than ever because you can get sucked into the, you know, uh, YouTube vortex or Instagram vortex or now the TikTok vortex, the, you know, TikTokification, if you will, of all social media where it just becomes this thing that people spend a ridiculous amount of time on their screens, just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and looking at other people's lives and, and oftentimes making them not feel, you know, probably the best. And all of a sudden they're like, well, you know, I don't have enough time to get this, this, and this done. I don't know how this person does this because I don't have as much time as they do. And the uh, H. Jackson Brown quote is, don't say you don't have enough time. You have the exact same number of hours per day that were given to Helen Keller, Michelangelo, Mother Teresa, Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Jefferson, and Albert Einstein. And obviously these people are, you know, probably be remembered for eternity, I would imagine. I, I, can't, I can't think of a time where, you know, we don't use the, the term Einstein. Maybe we don't, maybe we don't, maybe we switch it for some other genius in the future. But the point is, is that these people have the same amount of hours as those just that just tend to kind of waste it. And all I'm saying here is we put 86,400 seconds on the shirts a lot. Just be really mindful of your time and how you use it and who you use it with because you don't have that much of it and it is always running out. And if there's things you want to do in your life, get moving because you do have the same time as everybody else who you see doing the things you want to do and being as fit as you want to be and making the money you want to make and taking the trips you want to take and doing the things that, you know, you say you want to do, but you're not actually, you know, putting pen to paper or, you know, rubber to the road, if you will. So just be really aware of if there's some things you're doing with your time that you could maybe change. Hey, if I watch less Netflix, I could do more mobility. Hey, if I wasn't sitting here scrolling on Instagram all day, like I could actually prepare healthy meals. Just food for thought as we go through the day. Nothing to do with today's podcast, but just popped in my head. And sometimes you guys get random shit coming out of my mouth. So with that, we're talking minimally processed foods versus the highly processed foods and the things that you should know. And most of you hear the phrase, you know, eat fewer uh, processed foods. And almost every, you know, health expert probably says it. Um, I do. Uh, the way that I frame it is obviously just, you know, eat real food. And you probably heard your, your parents say it. You know, you are what you eat or eat your greens or eat your vegetables, whatever the, the terms were. And do you ever think to yourself, you know, like, why? Like, why should I do that? Um, and what, what is a, a processed food? Like, why is it so important to eat vegetables and not eat Sour Patch Kids? And I used to think like that was a, a common sense uh, just answer. And the older I get, <clears throat> the more I realize that there is a huge gap in education in a lot of things and food being one of them. I shared this a lot. I spoke to a group, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to say the company, of probably about 100 you know, high level people. <clears throat> These are their, it was one of their incentive programs, so like their, you know, president circle or diamond circle, the people who crushed it and, and reached all their goals. So these are people who are making, you know, in some cases, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year for a major company. And they had me come in and just do a, you know, a little fitness segment and uh, a nutrition piece. And I just kept going to these, you know, conference rooms or they would funnel people in. And I just did the same talk over and over and over again. And I saw about 100 people. And I asked the question in front of the room. I said, who here knows, you know, what macros are? And about four hands go up of 100. And then I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, we're going to have to, you know, change the entire script of what's going on here. And that's really when it hit me. I'm like, man, we are sharing oftentimes like real complex information that is not useful to people because we're trying to teach them 10th grade math, but they're in second grade. And that's what I'm getting at is a lot of times you hear things and that's like surface level, but you don't dig deeper to understand like, why do I need to do the things I'm doing and why does it matter? And what I'm going to go through here is just talking about like what counts as a processed food and what doesn't, um, how they kind of affect your health. The difference between, you know, essentially the four types of processed foods, which are, you know, your whole foods, 
then your minimally processed foods, your, your moderately processed foods, and then the super fake shit on the back end, and which processed foods might benefit your health and well-being, as well as the ones that may harm you and take you further away from your goals as opposed to move you closer to your goals. And really how to tell what whole and minimally processed foods are worth the effort and which ones aren't. Because sometimes, like anything in life, the juice is worth the squeeze, but sometimes you can make your life easier by not always doing the whole food version and the minimally processed version might be better for you. And I'm just gonna walk through three quick steps to kind of help you guys, I guess, boost your intake of eating real food without feeling deprived and overwhelmed as you go. So again, I'm, uh, I'm never gonna tell you guys to eat anything specific. You're grown adults, you eat what you want. I'm not trying to force feed you uh, one way or the other. But if you can eat real food, do it. I also understand that you're not gonna create another two hours of your day to always make real food. So I'm gonna walk you through ways uh, to make minimally processed foods a huge part of your life. If you're busy and you're on the go and you're just not gonna you know, go all in and, and grow all your own food and, and, and pick all your own food. The, the key here is to discover like a, a middle ground uh, with your nutrition and your habits that can help you transform your eating lifestyle or your diet, if you will, and making it uh, sustainable and manageable for the long haul. And that's the thing, like I could talk here, you know, from, you know, Monday morning quarterback, it, if you will, or from this, you know, I could preach to you and say, hey guys, you can only eat real food, you can only do this. But A, that's not what I do. And that would, I would be fucking lying to you for one. And two, it's not realistic. It's the same way, I'm not gonna tell you is not to drink alcohol. What's the healthiest thing you can do? It's never drink alcohol. That's not, this is, the science is there now, it's not debatable. Like never, you know, taking shots of whiskey and never smashing Irish car bombs at the bar or taking mind erasers. That is not a great life choice. You know, drinking those things is not good for you. And if you are devoid of alcohol, it's the healthiest option. Now I could say that here all day, I go, but that's not realistic. We had friends over last night, had a couple beers with them, totally normal. Felt fine today, came in. I feel like shit now after this workout we <laughs> went through today, but that's the workout that's actually not the beers. So that's where my fitness is stealing my fitness uh, in the case of this awful Sunday events Metcon. Not to get lost here, uh, the point I'm driving at is, I'm not telling you, hey, if you, you only have to eat, you know, only real foods and nothing else, that's not realistic. And I wanna give you guys something you can take with you. It's the same thing, I'm like, well, don't ever drink alcohol. For most of you, that's not realistic. And so there's ways you can integrate those things into your life. And not to get lost here, but our workout today was absolutely awful. We did a, so I had two suggestions from our people here. One, uh, Patrick is uh, comes in like a, maybe like the, the Sunday, Matt kind of was here before. He's like, you know, we should do like a, we could do like a team type of thing, like partner stuff or whatever. And I'm like, yeah. Um, I've done things like that before where you, you row like a long distance. Like let's say you're gonna row a marathon, but you do it with four people. It goes way faster because obviously you're not always fatigued and you can rest in certain intervals. It's, it's a cool thing, it builds camaraderie and um, there's a play aspect to it and there's a competition. There's a lot of things that happen in there other than just exercise. And also I do like the, the partner aspect of things and and just the, the teamwork in general, like feeling like, <clears throat> like I did in college you know, for example, like that's your team. You build this cohesive kind of unit and you know, iron sharpens iron, you guys have heard it before. So he's the first one and then later in the week, uh, Dave DiLorenzo, and I'm gonna get DiLo back on the podcast. He um, comes and says, we should do this workout where it's like you, you ride the bike for like 10 cows and then you do a lap around the building and you ride the bike for 10 cows and do a lap around the building, which sounds fucking terrible, um, depending on how long you do it for. Anything more than probably three of those sounds rough to me and so I took those two things and I married them together and they had a baby which is what we did today and it was a 33 minutes um, partner I go you go max cows on the assault bike or the concept two herd bikes and while you were on the bike your partner was doing a lap around the building here which for us is about I would say 400 meters give or take like one lap around the track and then you just kept switching back and back and back and back and back. And uh, 
yeah, I didn't feel real well for a long time and I still have that kind of Metcon cough. So if I cough for you guys, I apologize. It's been a long time since that's happened here on a Sunday, but I laid on the ground for a good, probably a good three, four minutes. And then I sat there for a good 15 where I just did not feel, uh, I did not feel pleasant for sure. Cause that's a lot of exertion and that's a rough day, man. Uh, the winter today was like five, would they get 500 and like 545 cows, I think in 33 minutes and D'Lo and I were like just under 500 is bad. It's a bad day. Anyways, nothing to do with the podcast, but if you want something off the do in terms of a workout, uh, get with a, a partner or a friend or maybe somebody you don't like uh, for that matter and set the clock for 33 minutes and do I go, you go. One of you runs um, 400 meters and one of you does the max cows on the bike and you just see how how high the cows can get and at the same time, how terrible you can feel. So anyways, the truth about your processed foods, some are bad and some are not as bad. And a lot of people, you know, will vilify certain foods and they put them into like, a, I can never eat this category. And I don't think it's necessary for a lot of people. And A, I don't think it's realistic. And oftentimes it's misguided. I'm not a fan of the like fear mongering that goes on with food. I was having this talk last night um, with her friends that were over and uh, she was asking a question about, you know, coffee creamer and different options and Heather goes with the, uh, the nut pods. And then there's, you know, some other options just for certain flavors and people, you know, you like your coffee. It's a, it's a thing you enjoy in your life. She's like, you know, what about the fake sweetener? And I'm like, you know, I always go off of volume for things. It's the way I look at, you know, diet soda and people, you know, sometimes get, we have a whole podcast on why diet soda is safe. If you want to listen to it, we have all the research there that we share. You being a healthy person, eating mostly real food, fruits and vegetables, you know, not abusing drugs and, you know, drinking all the time and getting to sleep at a decent hour and waking up early and, and taking care of yourself. If you want to drink a diet Coke every day, like you're going to be all right. Like, you're going to be okay, dude. Uh, you look at all the people who, who are walking around on the earth right now that are 90 fucking years old. Do you know how much dumb shit that those guys did for so long? Like, we, we, we vilify things like, oh, I can never have a Diet Coke. I'm not saying, like, you have to or even you need to. I go, but I personally, like, I'll drink a, a Diet a w root beer, which, by the way, is the most amazing root beer. Like, Diet a w you can't fuck with it. Like... I'm sorry, um, whatever the other ones like Barks or anybody else, like it's irrelevant. And I drink it, I feel totally fine. And sometimes I'll have like a, a diet uh, Sprite or a diet 7-Up and I feel great. And oftentimes when I do those, it kind of serves as like my sweet like treat or like my dessert. And then I don't feel like I have to eat shit afterwards. So personally for me, I eat better when I throw those things into my life. Back in the day when I would devoid of everything, well, Jeremy, you can't have, you can't have diet soda, you can't have a Gatorade Zero, you can't have a Powerade Zero, it's just water, coffee, tea, and you're gonna eat fish and asparagus. Yeah, you can get super shredded doing that, but you're fucking miserable and you hate your life, um, or at least I did. And what I find is that when you're, you're depriving yourself of, of everything like that all the time and you're telling yourself you can't have it, there's only so long most people can go before they crack. So that's what I'm saying here. I'm gonna talk about what are processed foods and kind of break down the scale of it. And obviously you have to eat mostly real food, but you have to be a real person. And whether we did a podcast on flexible dieting, not that long ago, you can listen to that, where you integrate these things into your life if that's the type of person you are. Again, it all comes down to personality type, but to completely vilify whole groups of food, for a lot of people, I, I don't think that's probably the best option. Now, again, you have to know yourself and who you are. So I'm talk about, you know, food processing and it kind of works on a, on a spectrum, right? From whole foods to highly processed foods, but there is some gray area in between. So whole foods are basically as you find them, how they come in nature or, or super close. Like, you know, in our backyard, we have uh, lemon trees and lime trees. And I think we now have an orange tree, but the lemons just grow and we pick them right that or they fall on the ground and we just grab them and that's how we use them. That's a whole food in its you know most natural form and basic stuff. 
The minimally processed foods are the ones that are slightly altered without really changing the nutritional content of them. I'm gonna go over specific examples here in a second. And then your moderately processed foods have been altered more. And at this point, you're probably reducing some of the nutritional value, um, the micronutrients, and you're taking those out and then you're adding other components to make it uh, palatable or taste a certain way. And then last but not least, the highly processed foods, the ones that are barely, <laughs> they barely look like what they started out as. Um, they're so far from their whole food origins and they have minimal uh, nutritional value. And I'm gonna break down the examples of those too. But just so we're clear here, there is benefits of minimally processed foods. You know, there's so many diets uh, that are popular and I think something works for everyone, which I, I say quite a bit on here. But for most people, based on your diet, real food is the key but having some of the minimally processed foods i think are okay if you can handle it in a certain format and again when i'm talking about minimally processed foods um they contain more nutrients than highly processed foods that's the key uh so think of it this way your minimally processed foods versus the highly processed foods the ones that are highly processed tend to be way more addictive. They tend to have way more sugar. They're the refined starches. They're the unhealthy fats. They're the sodium preservatives and all the fillers and basically the fake shit to make them hyper addicting, if you will. And uh, the minimally processed foods are pretty close um, to the completely real version. They might have slightly less micronutrients or slightly less fiber or maybe not as, as many, you know, essential fatty acids. So when I talk about eating processed foods, just know like where you are in the spectrum. Is it minimally processed, moderately, or highly when you guys are making, obviously, decisions? And your health's obviously going to benefit from it. You know, a diet rich in whole foods and minimally processed foods is associated with lower risks of depression, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and obviously cancer. And humans are healthier when they consume more whole foods and fewer highly processed ones. This is common sense. I hope everybody would know this. Humans are just healthier when you eat real food. You just are. That's why you hear me say it all the time. And then sticking to the minimally kind of processed scale. I think if you can do that, you'll easily regulate your diet um, or your weight and your appetite and you'll have more energy. And Jeremy, what are examples of, let's say, you know, minimally processed foods? Think about it this way. If you're going to eat, let's say, French fries versus like a, a baked potato with a, a couple of things on it, you know. That's what I'm talking about here. Or if it's, you think about it this way, if it, you want me to get like super, super extreme, just off the top, like a whole food would be, let's say brown rice. In that kind of processing range, you're getting closer to white rice and then the highly processed is like Rice Krispies. Does that make sense? Like, so think of it that way. Like, Jeremy, what, how would the progression work if it's sweet potatoes, to let's say sweet potato fries to sweet potato pie. That's kind of the, the scale I, I wanna move down. Hopefully that example makes sense for you guys. So eating whole food is key. If you can keep the foods minimally obviously processed and you want minimally processed foods that contain more satisfying micronutrients, um, the reason I say you want it closer to real food and closer to whole food and minimally processed than the highly processed stuff. One, the micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals, they take longer to eat, um, and they're gonna fill you up on less calories. That's your baked potato versus your french fries. That's your apples and almonds versus your apple juice and goldfish. That's your steak and you know broccoli and maybe some beans and an orange versus a grilled cheese sandwich and you know some cheese curds mm. and chocolate. 
Like, these are all common sense things we should know. And which brings me to the point, should you give up all processed foods? For most of you guys, probably not. I, I think, like I mentioned, it's, it's super strict to just keep whole foods and it's not realistic for most people. Now, I had a, a girl here, Alyssa, to like the whole 30, maybe about like a month ago. And I think it really helped her uh, kind of set a baseline. But she would come in and just say, you know, it's really tough some days. It's really, really hard to do. And I think it's nice to, even if you want to test yourself and, and kind of push your limits, but I don't see the, the problem if, if her eating, you know, 95% real food and then, hey, I'm going to have, you know, some dark chocolate here or I'm going to have some, you know, Justin's maple almond butter. And I just say that because it's like so addicting. Um, I have a tough one with that. But point being is for you guys to only eat whole foods and real foods, it's not realistic. It's super restrictive. And I think it makes your life probably miserable, especially if you, you travel or you go into any social settings. Because if you can never eat anything that is processed at all, your, your selections become real limited real fast. And so but again, and there there is a point of where some, you know, processed foods are good for you and it can make your life a lot easier and a lot better. And what I'm talking about is the things that we buy at our house, like the store prepared hummus. I'm not going to I'm not doing any hummus making at my house. We went to our neighbors across the street a couple weeks ago and uh, he had salsa there on the table and Heather's training. He's like, oh, this is really good. He's like, oh, yeah, I just made it. He's like, oh, it's super easy to do. And he like walks us through the whole steps and, and does it in the food processor. I'm like, respect, Andrew. That's not happening here. I don't I don't got time for that. I'm not I'm not a culinary whiz. It was, it was impressive and it was actually good. Uh, point being is that's the things we'll do. Like we will oftentimes buy store prepared hummus. In fact, we always do. This place Bullet Greens on the street, we do it at the best hummus. It's amazing. I'm not making it. it. Saves me time. It's a good source of fiber and it tastes great. The same thing with salsas. Same thing with protein powders. Like, obviously, JLab Pro is our sponsor. If you guys want to check it out, PP10 to get 10% off all your protein. Uh, Sweet with Stevia, it's real. But that protein powder is extremely protein-dense. It's a low cost per serving, and it's super easy to use and throw into your life. That's it. That is a, These are examples of minimally processed foods. So the hummus you buy in the store, that's where well, you're eating processed foods. Yeah but it saves me time and it's good for me and it's fine. I'm not going to do that on my own. Same thing with the protein powder. Great bang for your buck. And for you, you know, for my vegan folks out there, like tofu, for example, uh, it's minimally processed, obviously. Uh, if you get the real, you know, whatever you're, I'm not a tofu person, but if you get the good, I guess the good stuff, is that a thing with tofu? Um, it's easier than you guys shelling adamame, um, versatile flavor profile, and it's a good source of calcium. So again, certain processed foods undeniably make eating healthier and more convenient. And it makes your, sometimes it makes your meals delicious just by throwing in these basic things. Second, processed foods obviously taste amazing. Um, that's just life, dude. Like, I don't know how else to say, it, you know, when, and when you eat them in, in moderation, they can help you guys uh, not be serial killers. They can help you connect with your friends, you know, and boost your mood and help you experience pleasure and all the amazing, you know, uh, culinary geniuses we have out there that make all these amazing things. And so I would tell you, like, if just just map it out and plan it and make it part of your day, if it's, you know, tracking macros and flexible dieting or if you do, uh, you know, six on, one off, whatever your eating style is, but, you know, having a beer, you know, with your friends at a, at a Vikings Packers game when the Vikings kicked the shit out of the Packers, like, that's a great time, dude. That's a great memory. And it would have been fun without the beers, but it's, I think, even more fun with the beers because I don't do it all the time, right? And if you go to your, you know, if I go to Italy, I'm going to eat pizza. Like, I think when, when Heather and I were in Italy, I think all I did was, you know, drink Peronis and eat fucking pizza every day. Like, it was amazing. And now that's not a moderation. I'm not suggesting you do that. But it, hey, when in Rome, right? And so you have to be realistic with what you're doing and just really pick your spots. 
but there's no denying that cinnamon rolls are awesome. They, they just really are. Like there's just certain things that they do make life better. You're like your favorite, you know, donut shop where you grew up or your favorite, you know, burger place or your favorite steakhouse. Like there's certain things they're going to do that are just, I think life devoid of all of that. And like just trying to always, you know, let me eat everything perfect all the time. I just don't think is realistic. And third, for all of you guys listening, progress is, is much more important than being perfect. And I think that's the biggest thing. I'm never going to tell you not to drink booze. I'm never going to tell you not to eat pizza. You do what's best for you and your goals. And all you can really do is ask yourself, you know, am I healthier this year than I was last year? And I don't mean like, you know, if you broke your leg or something. Just are the habits refining over time? And I tell Heather this all the time because she can be overly critical um, of herself. And I, obviously, like, you live with me and I'm, something's wrong with my brain. And uh, I do what I do. And I think that's a huge part of it. But like she eats so much better now than she ever did. And not to say she ever ate like, like shit, but we both do. We both make so many better food choices. We are so mindful of the supplements that we take and the type of vegetables that we eat. And when we do, um, even when we eat chips, like there's the, I'm going to butcher the name, is it Boulder Canyon? It's out here in Goodyear, Arizona. They make these chips and they're just um, avocado oil and potatoes and sea salt. That's it. And they taste like, if you guys are from the Midwest, like old Dutch potato chips. They're super fucking addictive. Now, those are, that's a processed food, but the ingredients are so minimal and that's like the healthiest way because they're not throwing all the seed oils in there. There's not a bunch of fake coloring and, and pumping a bunch of shit up in there. Like I feel good when I eat them and it, it makes my life, it just makes my life more fun. It just does. So that's the key here. The goal with your nutrition is not to be perfect because none of us are. Like we all either fuck up, you know, accidentally or deliberately and none of us is going to, you know, make it out of here alive. So you got to, you know, enjoy yourself at, at some point. So instead of beating yourself up if you fail or you stumble or you fall or you don't do what you're supposed to do or you went over your macros or you said you were going to have one drink and you had two drinks, just imagine your habits on a spectrum and ask yourself, Am I when I was 27, was I eating really healthy and making healthy choices? And at 47, am I more mindful and do I care about my health more? And, I, and for most of you, hopefully the answer is yes. And if it's not and you find yourself in a rut, let go of the perfection shit and just try to move the needle forward. And think of the food, again, like on a spectrum of making better choices over time. And I gave some of the examples earlier, like with grains and vegetables, but if it's fruits, right? And you're a person who drinks apple juice, which I'm not trying to bag on apple juice, but that's the sugar juice, dude. You might as well drink a, a fucking Mountain Dew. I mean that, um, there's no nutrients in there. There's, I mean, I don't, I, can't, I don't have it in front of me. I don't think there's any nutrients in apple juice. And if it is, it's very minimal. And the juice is not worth the squeeze, no pun intended, when it comes to that because it's just sugar juice. The, the nutrients are like in the pit, the peel and the pulp, like not just this refined nonsense. So that's highly processed. The next step would be if you're an apple juice drinker, maybe move to applesauce, right? Because that's closer to actual apples. It's the same thing if it's, you know, beans and legumes. Obviously, once in a while, you can have some, you know, black bean tortilla chips. You know, they're great, you know, but so are refried black beans. And then you can just get black beans. If you're talking chicken's probably the easiest one, just off the top of my head, just because it's like you can get a baked whole chicken, like legit, or you can get rotisserie chicken, or you can get chicken nuggets. So that's what I'm saying from like a real food to middle ground to like full process. Same thing goes for, you know, shrimp to shrimp can and oil to popcorn shrimp. And, you know, if you want to talk about sweets, like, okay, you know, I love peanuts, but I don't eat a ton of peanuts unless I'm standing at like five guys or something waiting for them to make some burgers. And, uh, which is great, by the way, I haven't been to five guys in years. <clears throat> I, I remember that's a whole different story. I shouldn't get into it. Anyways, so shell peanuts will be like the whole food version. Next would be peanut butter. And then finally would be peanut butter cookies. See where I'm going here? Real food, 
processed, highly processed. Milk, real food. Squirt it from an udder, put it in a thing, you're good to go. Next, kind of your your yogurt, whether it's your flavored uh, Chobani or, or Feya or whatever people eat these days. Um, although GT's makes a great coconut yogurt. It's called Coco Yo, is it Coco Yo? It's amazing, super expensive. Uh, it's my favorite, um, personally. Great, uh, great bang, but man, it's, uh, it's expensive. Anyways, milk would be the whole food version. Your kind of flavored yogurt is next, and then the highly processed is the Rocky Road ice cream. And as you guys notice, when you move down that scale from whole food to highly processed, it's not just that. You're moving from more nutrients to fewer nutrients. Obviously, there's way more nutrients in apple than apple juice. There's way more nutrients in sweet potatoes than sweet potato pie. There's way more nutrients in peanuts than just peanut butter cookies. More in milk than in your favorite, you know, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. So what you're trying to do is boost your consumption of minimally processed foods. And you want to do that in these three easy steps. Number one, decide what upgrade is going to be worth it. Some minimally, minim minimally, minimally processed foods take more time, skill, and effort than others, yet their nutrition payoff is minimal. This is, again, is the juice worth the squeeze, and, and what's the best bang for your buck? So high effort versus low effort for big nutritional gain. So if you're a person who eats fast food breaded chicken nuggets, just make some baked chicken, dude. That's a bit, it's a huge jump and a huge difference. The people who are doing the store-bought muffins and baked goods, if that's really something you have to do, you can make a version at your house that's lower sugar, lower fake shit, higher fiber, throw some flax in there, some chia seeds, and, and make it more of like a nutrient-dense uh, baked good, if you will. Now, I think that's a huge nutritional gain for you guys. The same thing if you're doing like the fast food smoothies and the ice beverages, the things that like we're at the Orange County Airport John Wayne, a Jamba Juice. I think even Jamba Juice is still around, which is crazy. But no offense to Jamba Juice. That shit is not healthy for you. It's just not. A homemade smoothie you can make in, in a couple of seconds with fruits, veggies, proteins, and healthy fats. You really can do that. That is such, such a low effort exchange for you guys. Um, if you're somebody who does, if you still eat breakfast cereal, which I know Cinnamon Crunch and, and Captain Crunch sounds amazing, it's not good for you. You can make oatmeal at your house. It's a big nutritional gain. If you're doing, you know, frozen entrees and like those frozen dinners and that fake shit, make a meal at your house of real food. Grow something and put something in a pan for vegetables. It's super easy. Heather and I tag team it most of the time. I grill the meat. She makes the vegetables, call it a day. It's not rocket science. And that's a huge nutritional gain. And obviously, like I understand, going through a drive-thru and getting chicken nuggets is low effort. And obviously, you know, doing baked chicken is going to take more time and it's high effort. But there's such a huge ROI when you do that consistently. Now, there's other options where there's really little nutritional gain if you're to do it. So... This is what I'm saying when you don't have to be extreme, right? Like canned beans that are rinsed and drained, it's super easy to do. Soaking your beans and then drying the beans and then cooking them, that's, that's a lot of effort, man. And I don't think you're gaining that many nutrients when you do that. I really don't. You're chopping up green salad at your house, boom, 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 going crazy. Just get the pre-chopped salad mix. I go pick up Heather, like a, whether it's uh, spinach or spring mix or whatever, I'm not gonna grab a bunch of like heads of lettuce and greens and stuff and chop up my own stuff. Again, I'm not gaining anything by that. Those are things that are a waste of time. If it's, you know, commercially prepared guacamole, hummus, and sauces, you know, ketchups or these, the healthy ranches that we use at our house now. Or you can make your own homemade guac and hummus and salsa like my neighbor does. I don't got time for that shit. Most of you don't either. So that is a, a low, it's a low return on your investment. 
The same thing I, I feel about frozen like corn, if that's what you guys eat, or if you're gonna get corn on the cob and make it and scrape off all the corn. Same thing if it's, you know, for, mo for the most part, store-bought rotisserie chicken versus roasting a chicken at your own house. I know people do that, but that ain't for me. So that's what I'm talking about. You have to be smart about what you're doing and understand, okay, if I get the, the, the whole food version of this and, and make it, you know, perfect, if you will, and versus the minimally processed version, how much am I getting from my effort? And it's gonna differ for foods, but I just wanna give you guys some examples just so you know. And what you have to ask yourself is, you know, what easy, satisfying, less processed swaps can you make in your life to be healthier, save you time, and allow you to kind of stick on the schedule? Because obviously, you know, minimally processed foods are gonna take more time than the highly processed ones, and that's just, that's life. And what I would tell you to do is, Set aside time to prepare the foods that you need to, you know, schedule time in the next week to shop and prepare a few meals based around the things that aren't super processed. And if you can try batch cooking, buying stuff uh, in bulk or uh, ready to eat minimally processed stuff, maybe it's pre-cut vegetables or some of the pre-cooked proteins, or if you, you know, for the, those of you guys who need to subscribe to like meal services and, and things like that. But like I'll go into, let's say like natural grocers here and just get eggs that are already made, just the hard boiled eggs. You just grab them and go. It's super easy. I can grab that, I can grab a little chicken, um, the organic, you know, true cut stuff, which tastes amazing and way better than any of the fucking chicken I make. Is it more expensive? For sure. I go, but it's saving me time. I'm buying time back. Like that's what I'm talking about. Like I'll drink the Koyas. Um, are they processed? Yeah, I'm not gonna make a, pea, rice, protein, cinnamon, horchata mix a protein shake at my house every single day. And if I did, it's not going to have seven grams of fiber in it and that minimal sugar. And if it did, it probably tastes like, you know, hot garbage. So I'm not going to do that. So you got to be smart and really pick your spots, but set aside time to prepare things and just look around the grocery store and see what other swaps and choices you can make. And then what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to experiment a little bit. You're not going to like every new food you try and you're not going to like every pre-made thing and you know but some things might surprise you and you might find like oh man this is actually something i never thought about doing and it makes my life you know a whole hell of a lot easier and for the longest time and i'll let you guys go in a second i didn't think you know the i'm like wow well, hard-boiled eggs that you know i don't know the brand there, there's so many now uh but there's like a something farms is the one i'm just blanking on it uh, and we'll, Heather will pick those up a lot. I think it comes in a pack of six or something. And for the longest time, I'm like, ah, but I don't know if those don't seem like they're fresh. It seems like, I don't know. I had some weird like phobia about them. Like I thought they were going to be like disgusting or shitty. And once I tried them, like, these taste just the same as the ones we get in Europe at like our European breakfast. This tastes just the same as the ones that we make at our house. I couldn't tell the difference. And they're great. And I think I like hard boiled eggs. They're great. They're easy to go to. Good source of protein. Good source of fat. Eggs are one of the most powerful foods on the planet. But to make hard boiled eggs is a pain in the ass to me. I'm lazy when it comes to that stuff. I don't want to do it. So picking those up saves me a ton of time. And those are the little things I'm talking about, you guys. Just to be smart with what you do. And obviously, you know, when I say eat real food, I mean that. But these things are are in the the closest versions to real food as they can be that are minimally processed. And so again, just use your head when you think about it, you know, you know, like <laughs> people just, sometimes they're full of shit, you know, like it's like, oh, I'm eating carrots or I'm eating carrot cake. Well, yeah, there's carrots in it, but there's no nutrients in that. Like don't, don't be an asshole. Like just really be mindful of what you do. And like, well, I had some fruit today. I drank orange juice. It's like, no dude, like an orange is the fruit. The, the orange juice is the highly processed. And again, just think in your head as you go, the closer to real it is, the more nutrients it's gonna be, the less it looks like the version it once was, the fewer nutrients are gonna be in there. And so it's kind of, you know, it's it's a food that's not really gonna serve you in your body. So again, hopefully that helps you guys just kind of break down the differences. I know it's not rocket science, but sometimes it's just nice to hear. And uh, there's things you can do that make your life easier. And I'm not gonna harp on that. Well, you know, I always gotta eat this and it's always gotta be organic and this. I get it too, we eat mostly organic stuff at our house, but sometimes I just go and like, the only blueberries I got are just basic blueberries. And I don't give a shit, it doesn't matter. Like you just pick them up and you go. 
and you can't always make a perfect choice, but you're always going to pick the, the lesser evils, right? And so I'm a fan, and I, I, I use the, the True Story brand as the example. Like, their deli meat, their carved chicken breast is amazing. It's awesome. And it's it's not as real as, you know, if I just got the whole chicken, but it's pretty close, dude. And I feel good when I eat it, and I like the way it tastes and make my life easier. And that's what I hope for you guys is, is as you look through your diet and you look for certain things, like see what little easy hacks and swaps you can do because the world has changed so much in the last even five years. There's so many healthy options and so many quick go-to things that are around, especially if you have access to grocery stores like a like a Sprouts or the, the Whole Foods of the World or the Natural Grocers, or even if you're, no matter where you live, if it's on the East Coast and it's like a Wegmans, if you're in the Midwest and it's like a Hy-Vee, um, they're gonna have healthy sections and, and things that are kind of either pre-made or minimally processed that can make your life easier and a lot better moving forward. So take that for what it is. Hopefully it helps you guys. I just wanted to give you some stuff that, you know, would help you kind of boost your your adherence to your, your healthy eating without sacrificing convenience and, and taste and flavor. And again, obviously enjoy your life in moderation as you need to because it's, it's fun to eat pizza and cinnamon rolls and, and drink beers once in a while. We just can't do that every day and expect to, uh, you know, look like a rock star. So uh, any questions, as always, just ask. If you guys are on uh, Apple Podcasts, drop it a five-star, leave some comments. I, I truly do appreciate it. It means a lot to us and selfishly it helps us. If you're on Spotify, you guys can drop it a five-star on there as well. It takes all of about 15 seconds. We appreciate it. If you want to join us in the Jeremy Scott Fitness app, jeremyscottfitness.app, our six-week strength and stamina program is kicking off tonight. We get access to everything in there in a week. It's completely free. If you like it, we'd love to have you guys, and I'm happy to help you and answer your questions once you're inside. If you think it sucks, you guys don't have to, uh, you don't have to check it out. And uh, yeah, if you want samples of Athletic Greens or Beam, hit me up. I'm happy to send them your way. And uh, that's it. So anything else you guys need, just holler at me. I'm going to be back on next week. Heather actually has a... 10k trail race up north that i think will be saturday and then i'm going to try to get her on the podcast on sunday to talk about her uh like 30 plus day alcohol experiment and just what she got from it why she did it what she gained from it her take on alcohol my take on alcohol what we have seen as we've gotten older with friends and family and kind of you know, my experience with it, you know, not having control over it versus having control over it and all the things that kind of wrap up around there. Because I know, at least it feels that way to me, the drinking alcohol has become such a such a focal point of everything we do socially now um, to a level that I, I never thought before. And I've been meeting a lot of people and hearing a lot of stories of people who just feel like they don't feel good. They feel like they've been drinking too much and too often. And it's just not putting them in a good uh, physical or, uh, or mental headspace, which is a whole whole other component uh, of alcohol and just, just being a depressant and, and what it does to certain people. And again, I'm not vilifying it. Um, I'm a fan of it if, if you, you can control and handle it and do it in moderation, but there is a, there is a lot of consequences to, uh, to not having a good governor on, uh, on your consumption of it. At least that's what I've lived through, you know, from my early, early childhood. Um, up until now. So we'll talk about that next week. And I think it'll be a, a good one for you guys. And you'll get a lot out of that. She's put a lot of research into it. And uh, I'll be doing my due diligence as well. So have an awesome weekend. Hopefully the Vikings win. Uh, thank you guys as always. If you're watching on YouTube, I appreciate it. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jeremy Scott Fitness uh, on YouTube. 1500 videos, all free for you. Uh, and until next time, eat well, train hard, be nice to people. And please, you guys, Keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.